to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Spirit break out. I'm speaking to your spirit, man, not you. Heaven come down. It's not a special number. Spirit break out. Break our walls down. Spirit break out. Hey, heaven come down. I'll sing it one more time then I'll teach something is happening to your spirit spirit break out is deep calling unto deep break our walls down spirit break out break our walls down Listen, I'm about to teach you the secret of kings. This is a deep secret in the kingdom. The anointing does not make the difference. The anointing is the difference. Spirit break out hey, Break our walls down Spirit break out yeah, hey, Heaven come down Psalms 89 from verse 20 to 24. Please be sensitive. I'm teaching on the anointing now. The third key to hosting revival. It says, I have found David, my servant. This is a word many of us don't like to hear. Because when you hear the word servant, it looks like it's an insult to sonship. It's not. The hallmark of sonship is servanthood. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who although he was equal with God, he proved his sonship by becoming a servant. Listen carefully. Please just help those under the anointing. Was soaking in such a cloud in this place with my holy oil I have anointed him the anointing is not in the oil except if the oil is anointed by someone who is anointed there are many oils in many homes that is just oil with whom my hand because of the anointing shall be established read this my arm shall also strengthen him we're reading to verse 24 the enemy because of the anointing shall not exact upon him nor the son of wickedness afflict him 23 i will beat down his foes before his face and plague them that hate him if you are a believer, read the last verse with me, 24. But my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him. 
and in my name shall his authority be exalted. I have found my servant. In the equation of greatness, there always is a point in a man's life where you encounter the anointing. What is the anointing? The anointing is God's ability to produce his dimension of results. God's own ability that enables a man to produce God's dimension of result. Nicodemus came to Jesus by night and said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God, he said, for no man can do these things except, so there is a condition, God be with him. Are we together now? And Apostle Peter in chapter 10 and verse 38 of Acts, preaching in the house of Cornelius to the Gentiles, he said, how God, verse 10, chapter 10 and 38, how God, look at the extent to which God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, and with power. And he went about, say went about, say doing good. You don't do good just because you are compassionate. It takes more than compassion to do good. You have to be anointed to do good. The situations that plague men in our world and your life and your family require more than a good heart. You must be anointed. There are many pastors that love their members. They want to see them rise. They want to see them healed. They want to see them blessed. They are well intentioned. But the requisite level of anointing to make it happen is not there. That's why you came for this conference. Ah. Man of God, you need more than revelation and good speaking. At the back of it, there must be the grace for performance. The grace for performance is not the anointing that makes people fall down. No. They fell down when Jesus said, I am here, yet they were not changed. Mm. How shall these things be, seeing that I know not a man? Lord, how will it happen? He said, the power of the highest. That's how it will happen. The messianic prophecy in chapter 61 of Isaiah, the prophet saw, please give it to us. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach glad tidings to the meek. He hath anointed me to bind up the brokenhearted. You don't bind up the broken hearted using a bandage. It takes power to bind up the broken hearted. To proclaim liberty to the captives. It takes more than good English. I set you free now. No sir. No sir. We've tried it again and again and we mocked ourselves and mocked God. And the opening of prison to them that are bound. Look at this brothers and sisters. Reason with me that a man can I have just one gentleman you come please come reason with me please that a fine young man like this my brother here can be alive and happy walking walk with me yet he's in prison he's a graduate keep that scripture there this is the Bible it's a messianic prophecy walk with me again 10 years into graduation he's still in prison he's moving physically but the Bible says he is bound the woman who was bound 18 years was going to temp the temple. She was a member of the synagogue. Verse 2. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort those who mourn. 
You don't comfort those who mourn just by acting like, oh, you are just in a welfare department. Sorry, eh? Don't cry. No. No. It takes the anointing to wipe tears, not a handkerchief. Verse 3, we're reading down to 4. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. Do you know what that means? To fix a date for their breakthrough. To give them beauty. Oh, look at this. So I look at this brother and all that is in his life is ashes. The Bible says to give them, meaning you have it. Such as I have, I have beauty and I can give a man for ashes. The Bible says the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. It says that they might be called the oaks or trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. We're reading to verse 4, last verse. It says, and they shall build the old waste, not just with architectural skills, with the anointing. It says they shall raise up the former desolations. They shall repair the waste cities, even the desolations of many generations. The anointing of the Holy Spirit. Are we together? Yes. We live in a wicked world. If you are not anointed, you will continue to flatter yourself until you are utterly defeated. For 30 years, Jesus kept working until the Spirit of God came upon him. And then in Luke chapter 4, don't turn there. But when you read from verse 15, he went to the temple and then the Bible says it was given unto him the scroll of prophet Isaiah and he read the scripture. And when he said it, he said, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your eyes. And then he saw a man with a withered hand and he said to prove to you that I have now become the Christ, not just Jesus, the son of Mary, stretch your hands. And all of a sudden, a miracle happened. And they marveled. What is this? Who is this? Brothers and sisters, it takes more than compassion to change your family. You won't just get back and say, I'm a Christian. No. And let me teach you something very powerful. There are many things I can say about the anointing. But I want to teach you, thank you, one operation of the anointing and then I tell you how it comes. You see, the anointing is in levels and dimensions. Say levels. Say dimensions. Levels meaning that you can have more of the anointing in the same dimension. For instance, a healing anointing. You can have a healing anointing and you can have a greater level of the same dimension, a healing anointing. Then you can have another dimension. There is the anointing for favor. There are all kinds of things. Are we together now? Please look at me. Your possibilities in this kingdom are determined not just by you being anointed, but the level and the extent of that anointing. So the Bible says how God anointed Jesus. So the issue was not that he was anointed. Look at the extent. The anointing works like money. Yesterday I used money. Can I use it again? This is 1,000 Naira. Is that true, Nigerians? If you come to me and say, I want to eat lunch and I give you 1,000, your lunch is under 1,000, I presume. Are we together now? But if you want to buy a car and I give you 1,000 Naira, 1,000 cannot buy the car. So you need more of the same thing. Now watch this. The same money that buys a car is the same money that buys lunch. But the quantity... You are not a blessing just because you are anointed. Pastors, listen, this is where we fool ourselves. I'm anointed. I'm anointed. Hands were laid on me. How God anointed. How God anointed. You are not a blessing until you are unusually anointed. You can only solve the problems that are lower than your level of anointing. Listen. I'm using money because I want you to understand. Let's assume that every challenge in this brother's life 
has um, a naira equivalent of anointing. I hope you understand what I'm saying. I'm not saying anointing is money. Are we together? <clears throat> now, let's assume that this brother needs breakthrough. And let's say that breakthrough is 600 naira dimension of anointing. You get my explanation? And this brother's wife needs a child. And this brother needs a healing. And this brother needs speed. You calculate everything in his life. And he needs 5,000 naira dimension of anointing and I come as a man of God invited and I say in the name of Jesus I set you free it is only the problems that are within the level of anointing that will be solved this is an uncomfortable truth but it's true listen by the grace of God when it comes to teaching on the anointing I'm teaching from my office not revelation the Bible says that every man minister be careful when a naked man says I want to give you a shirt there are many people with no proof and no result bragging arrogantly when it comes to the issues of the anointing I tell you with all humility I'm not careful to say this this is an office it's a call that's it that's why you find out that in almost every church and every Christian gathering testimonies recycle they are proof of the level of the anointing when the and when the man of God transits in the spirit you will know there is a switch ah one testimony of cancer then another then another then another you now know that something has happened the miracles within that assembly will peck at the level of the grace of the vessel most of us men of God will not want to admit this because we lie to you like we have everything and can solve every problem the remaining issues in your life despite our praying for you proves there is something wrong I'm here to help you I'm not here to make you hate the body but I want to show you the truth you are not a blessing if you are not truly truly anointed look at this this brother can come right now having a cancer and I can say in the name of Jesus I'm walking in the healing anointing be healed and jump and do all kinds of jamboree if I'm a man of God except God did not call me all that pride we talk at the end he's not healed this guy goes to a Benihin meeting Benihin stands on stage he has not started praying the cancer leaves the difference is not God how God anointed If you learn this about the anointing then no matter how high you think you are anointed you will still have the fortitude to say Lord there can be more if you are a good shepherd and you look at your members over time you can see that I've prayed for certain cases and nothing really changed it's not because you don't love God it's a truth you must admit with humility and go and find out which vessel in the body has that grace level or that grace dimension that can bless you these are deep truths about the anointing I have seen people come to me and it's amazing how easy their challenges are when they are saying it I begin to smile not in pride because I know that the challenge that brought them is within the level of the grace that God has given me to solve and I laugh with them and in moments it's gone but I have also met certain cases over the years that even me after I prayed for the people I had to go on a retreat because I knew they would not get any result. You have to love God to admit this thing I'm saying because it will sting your ego. And we men of God will not truthfully admit. We would like to say, look, it's your faith that didn't work. It's a lie. When a patient gets to the hospital, you don't blame him for anything again. His assignment is to get to the hospital. Listen, I'm a man of faith. But it is not just faith, faith the way we say it. Because a dead man does not need faith to come back to life. I don't mean to remind you about your past. 
but some of us who come from very occultic backgrounds and villages you will see a believer that they will say they concocted a charm the person passed the charm and matched it he didn't have faith in the charm yet the charm still started working and then they will say ah what did you match you match charm you are in trouble the person was even singing hallelujah hey. and then you match charm and the charm vetoed your praise and worship and entered you and walked let me tell you this brothers and sisters please if you are a man of God here I can kneel down and beg you let's open up our heart and truly learn what we may not know let's be careful when we make boastful statements as men of God we must let the members know we are also students in the school of the spirit just because we have gone ahead does not mean we have graduated let's be very sincere so we don't mislead people and create a theology that explains away our lack of result and we keep blaming members you don't have faith you didn't give you it's not true the members themselves they respect us but they know that something this this thing doesn't add up god is not like this don't dishonor any man of god don't dishonor any church I'm an advocate of honor, but I'm opening your eyes to make you truly see God. If we don't tell ourselves the truth, we may not find him. So this brother, I can bless him. Imagine, brothers and sisters, that the anointing that is about to come upon you shortly, some of you will get up and go home with running, not just, no, you will run home and say, Mama, I found it. And say, found what? Say, Mama, I found it. Ah! found what i found the keys to open the heavens they say who is this one say mama you have been praying like that before you went for nyc say no something happened something happened and you say in the name of jesus let the gates be open something you are saying every day but now you say it all of a sudden in two weeks five of your brothers get jobs Two of the ladies are engaged and you turn, even you, you turn back and say, what happened? Listen, the more anointed we are, the more we reveal the true expression of God's possibilities. Our not being anointed will misrepresent the potentials that are in the Christ. This gentleman has had me preach about the Lord Jesus Christ and I pray for him, I pray for him and nothing happens. He will go back believing that God cannot do that thing. The next time he hears a man of God saying God is able to heal cancer, he will just laugh and not believe it. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising there's an army rising up they will break every chain break every chain listen the first key to being genuinely anointed is engaging the mystery of prayer and fasting write it down Thank you, my friend. I want you to be sensitive now. Please take it high for me, Mike. Let's be sensitive now. I want to pray. Luke chapter 4, 14 to 15. Please, quickly. One of the major keys to stepping into dimensions of the anointing, the power of the Holy Ghost, is the ministry of prayer and fasting. Jesus returned in the power. Listen. He went to the wilderness full of the Holy Ghost but returned in the power. After 40 days he went to the wilderness full of the Holy Ghost. Remember you have to be anointed with the Holy Ghost and power. It's not enough to be anointed with the Holy Ghost. He went full of the Holy Ghost. But after praying 40 days, 40 nights, he returned 
in the power of the spirit into Galilee and there went out what a fame of him all through the region round about 15 and he taught in their synagogues being glorified the ministry of prayer and fasting listen do not let anyone make you trivialize the power that is contained in prayer and fasting if and when done properly and my sisters there is no shortcut to this thing he spake a parable Luke 18 and verse 1 to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint the Bible was talking about prayer in James chapter 5 and it says the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous it says that it availed much and then the Bible says that Elijah was a man just like us but he prayed earnestly that there be no rain over a space of three and a half years. And then when the time was complete, he prayed again. When men pray, heaven moves. When men pray, their destinies move. When men pray, the flesh dies. When men pray, the glory comes. I tell you this, I'm a product of what prayer and fasting can do let the outer man perish but that you carry genuine spiritual power you reign you ancient zion king kadosh kadosh you were mighty on your throne you reign you ancient zion king kadosh kadosh you are mighty on your throne. Break forth, thou fountains of the deep, and weep, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. You are mighty in this place. Mighty in this place. You are mighty in this place. Listen. One of the graces that I trust the Lord to come upon you tonight, my brothers and my sisters, is the spirit of prayer and supplication. You need that grace. Man of God, pray twice. That that grace, let me tell you, train your members to pray. Train your members to fast and see the capacity of the spirit that they will carry. Have you not seen timid men and women Go to the place of prayer and come out as lions. There is no amount of counseling that will replace the power of prayer. Prayer and fasting. Number two, the second key to receiving the anointing is impartation. This is where we we'll round off tonight. Please pay attention. Impartation is a transference of spiritual possibilities. It's not just a transference of anointing. It's not just a transference of grace. Any dimension a man attains unto in the spirit is transferable under certain conditions. Are we together? Alaska Brahashi Nekatosia. Deuteronomy chapter 34 and verse 9, please. And Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom. For Moses had laid his hands on him. And the children of Israel hearkened unto him as, did, as the Lord did command Moses. Joshua was full of the spirit of wisdom because he received an impartation. Ezekiel chapter 2. 
very popular scripture when you read from verse 2 really 1 and 2 the spirit of the Lord read 1 give us 1 and 2 and he said unto me son of man stand upon your feet and I will speak with you but the guy was weak he couldn't stand up by his strength and then the miracle happened in verse 2 and the spirit entered into me when he spake unto me and that spirit set me up you don't stand by desire there is a grace you must receive that can bring you up he said stand up and he could not but the spirit entered me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet listen to me I am a product of not just an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ but I'm a product of many anointings anointings are like an address you can know where it came from in 2004 I desired so badly the grace that was upon evangelist Reinhard Bonke and I heard that he was in Joss and I came all the way <laughs> let me show you something please give us Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 3 to 4 if you can give us amplified our time is gone but please be patient with me tonight we're going to pray I will not waste your time unnecessarily God the Bible says came from Taman and all of that and his glory covered the heavens and the earth was full of his praises let me show you a mystery verse 3 verse 4 I want you to read with me one to read and his brightness was like the sunlight ra rays stream from where stop rays stream from where read on and there in the sunlight splendor was the hiding place of his power the power of God has a location it is hidden in his hands so impartation is a system that transfers the power of God to a man to a life to an individual but there is one law I must teach you it's called the law of honor that's the spiritual law allocated for receiving impartation you never receive an anointing from a colleague you never receive an anointing from a classmate you've heard my message commanding results Hebrews 7 verse 7 it's a mystery that has blessed the body I will show you why many of you may be close to the most anointed people in the world and never receive read with me is projected one to read yet it is beyond all contradiction that it is the lesser person that is blessed by what listen the power of God never flows until you create that spiritual potential difference through honor here's what the Bible says he that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive what a prophet's reward you can receive a prophet in the name of your elder brother you receive a hog and pocket money that's a brother's reward you can receive a prophet in the name of your roommate you receive a warm place to stay and an opportunity to fetch his or her food that's a roommate's reward before you ever receive your first assignment is discernment who is this man not just as a man does Elijah had the sons of the prophet he was a lecturer to them he was mentoring them to become prophets but Elijah said mm -mm, you are not a man you are a system you are more than just an ordinary man are you aware that God is going to take your master yes we know but and Elijah followed and when it was time to receive he said, tell me quickly, 
what you will have me do he said a double portion he said you have asked a hard thing however if you can see me was he not looking at him already he's not talking about physical sight he that has an ear not everybody has that ear he that has these eyes that means if you can discern what i represent that i'm not just a man i represent a spiritual system all of a sudden chariots came it is appointed unto men to die once so when a man is flying and going he's more than a man do you discern this and when he saw it he said my father my father the chariots of heaven and the horsemen thereof the mantle came when he caught it and went to the Jordan where is the Lord God the water did not part for Elijah the water did not part for Elisha the water parted for whoever carried that mantle Your possibilities are defined by the levels and the dimensions of the anointing. So meetings like this are a system of spiritual upgrade to bring you into a deeper level. And that's what we're going to do now. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. One of the reasons why we never receive from men of God is because of dishonor. There is a lot of dishonor in the body of Christ. The mantles of the generals are still on earth. Mantles don't leave earth to heaven. Dishonor shrouded them, waiting for a time appointed when a generation can discern enough. Are we together now? Every mantle you ever read about in this Bible is still on earth. Our attitude of dishonor is what has made us close. That's why I taught you yesterday that if you dishonor the body, there are realms you will never enter. Because there are anointings. I once met a woman. I consider myself to be a student of the Bible. I was ministering in a PFN crusade in Kano, a conference. And all of a sudden, I saw this woman. And the woman looked at me. And she said she finishes her Bible every 15 days. It's an anointing. She's an intercessor. Doesn't do anything. I felt like kneeling down to say, my God, what did you say? Please, that grace quickly. Now, I want you to listen because you are about to receive now. I went to Joe's for in her bonkers crusade. And all of a sudden, that man was here preaching like I'm preaching in this conference now. I was in the crowd of people. And you know his crusade, you stand, you don't sit. My goodness, was I tired. But I insisted. By the next day, I felt I had not honored that man enough. So I said, at least I will join the workforce. I saw them pushing people on wheelchairs and doing this. I said, can I help? They said, no, you must be trained. I said, training or no training, I must join. I came all the way from far. I didn't come to play games. Look, when you are desperate for something, nothing else matters. Like someone tonight needs to be desperate. When Reinhard Bonke preached, I was already in ministry. Very simple message as his manner is. I would have sat down there and said, what kind of cheap nonsense revelation are you? Do I need it, oh God. When you want something, you set your face like a flint. You've heard it in my teachings. There was a pregnant woman who was standing by me. She came for the crusade too every once in a while she will lean on me at one point i said ah, madam i'm not the owner of the which one is all this one i came to with with passion in my heart i stood on that ground for six hours i refused to be tired when reinhard bonke finished preaching he was about to take water so that he will minister the baptism of the holy ghost and then my eyes were open and all of a sudden i my first time of seeing the visible manifestation of the Holy Ghost I saw a bird not not just some I didn't even know I was in a vision the wings were tied with silvery bands it was hovering round I said my God what is this the bird will be bigger than this building hovering round and the Spirit of God took me to Genesis chapter 1 verse 2 and the Spirit over 
and the spirit of God taught me the secret to the miraculous that it is the union of the word and the movement of the spirit not the presence the movement of the spirit that births miracles when I came back from that vision I had backed the stage I didn't even know I had turned around something came upon me I knew that I got it I can share with you various encounters in my life prophet Kobus van Rensburg before he died of blessed memory in South Africa I, I kept searching for people who had met God's generals because every time I read about them I felt like I was reading about my family I would cry reading about them and I tried I found only two people Robert Lerdan and then Kobus van Rensburg I heard that he had met with Lester Sumro and Lester Sumro met with Smith Wigglesworth and Smith Wigglesworth left a command and said don't die with your anointing make sure you find young men and transfer this anointing and I said wow they went down to John Lake and several people and then I traveled to South Africa to go and see him to talk with him some of these people you met what did they tell you my hunger took me there are we together Though we are few, listen, we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before. There are men and women that have crossed that river. Listen, then I started having encounters. You've heard about my encounter with the Lord Jesus. I have to share it before I pray. Am I boring you tonight? I desired God more than ministry. I desired him more than titles. I was already praying for the sick. I was already seeing signs and wonders in my life. But I got to a point where my hunger, my, I knew that if, if he didn't do something about my hunger, it may kill me. And that night, the Lord Jesus walks into my room. My God, this is the man every preacher talks about. He's standing. I couldn't believe it. I stand, I stand in all of you. For me, it's not a special number. Jesus stood, my brothers and my sisters. Whether he was standing in the air or on the ground, I don't know. Many of you have heard me say, I still don't know how his face looks like. It's a deep mystery. Today, many people say they've met Jesus. Let me tell you the truth. When you meet Jesus, read your Bible. It took me more than one year to recover and become a normal human being from that encounter. That's why I'm surprised today when people casually say they are seeing Jesus and nothing happened. Go and read your Bible. And Jesus came to me. The life of God. The Zoe of the Father. When he stood before me, the first thing that happened to me was I knew that many preachers did not know him. Let me tell you, honestly speaking and truthfully so. This was the man I was preaching for. This was the man I was healing for. Now he's standing before me, a total stranger. I grew up in a Christian home and I'm seeing Jesus. And I don't know him I felt like I was the worst sinner ironically I did not feel condemned the sheer holiness that oozed out from him hi how do I describe this he never spoke he doesn't have to speak for you to know his light is a voice he was not speaking Yet he was talking to me. The things he told me, I would know many years. It's not like as I'm talking to you, you know it immediately now. No, it's first taught in your spirit. Then your mind starts breaking it down through a long period of time. When Jesus stood there and looked at me, I knew that nothing else mattered in this life again. 
when Jesus stood before me I knew that he was not a Christian hmm. I knew that he was not a Pentecostal I knew that he was not an Orthodox he was God and is God by himself I was like a speck of dust on the ground my brothers and my sisters I was not interested in ministry if he had asked me there and said let's go home I would say yes 20 times now I know why those who are about to go home when they see him they say bye bye you are saying come back they say you are joking you will never see him and want to stay back when all things that surround me become shadows in the light of you that's what happened I tell you truly nothing else in this life matters when you see him and then he looked at me and stretched his right hand to me light at its brilliance imagine magnifying the sun infinitely and putting it inside an ant you've heard me say how I did not die is something that I will ask him when we get to heaven and that light that entered me he left that was it in several encounters that would happen to me one day the Lord spoke to me and said son from today I give you my presence as a gift and then the Lord opened my eyes and I saw an angel and he said this is the angel that will walk with you he said he is called the angel of the Lord's presence that's what causes I'm explaining to you the mystery behind some of this shouting and jumping that you may not even know why you are just shaking there is a mystery he sent it and signified it by his angel many years down the line God will give me an assignment and say son any city you travel to there has to be one person at least that that light that came from me to you you must find at least one person who will receive that light and so tonight I know not everybody but I know there has to be someone there has to be someone with the call of prophecy and destiny ah. that must receive that light we are going to be praying now I'm going to be praying for the sick many things will happen very fast but brothers and sisters in the next one minute find the way of expressing your desperation before I minister to you more love more power more of you in my life more love more power, more of you in my life. This is a generation that seek your face. More love, more power, more of you in my life. Just one minute. More of you in my life. Lion of Judah, the Lamb upon the throne. I hail you, Most High. The Lion of Judah. The Lamb upon the throne, I hail you. I
lion I know the lamb I have seen the lion I have seen the lamb I worship the lion I worship the lamb And I will follow the lion I will follow the lamb I will follow the lion I will follow the lamb hey, hey, hey. Pray just one minute These are songs of the spirit. right now let hope rise darkness trembles in your holy light let hope let it rise darkness trembles from you again again to drink from you again hey, hey, hey. to draw from you again hey, hey. help them help them please we've come usher or not if there's someone under the anointing please help them now I stretch my hands I call for the wells of the prophetic all those called 
into the ministry and the dimensions of the prophetic I command hear the clarion call I call you to that realm right now in the spirit I call that prophetic grace in the name of Jesus I'm praying for you you will never be the same mantles are falling here tonight anointings are falling here tonight listen the boras are rising here tonight Elijah's arising here tonight for the kings to be born for revival to return for the mantles to return for revival to return hey Ali Ali oh Ali oh Ali Ali I pray anyone here called to carry the healing power wherever you are like fire from heaven take it now take that grace now the healing grace Shaka Tokata where are the Catherine Kuhlmans the Smith Wigglesworth I release that grace hey Anamashana I release the spirit of revelation the eyes that see I open spiritual eyes the eyes that see Step into your destiny. You have taken all my pain. You have taken all my shame. You have taken all the tears you have taken all the sorrow I give you worship worship the highest praise to the King I give you worship worship the deepest praise to the King our time is gone and we may not take testimonies but in the name of Jesus anyone who is sick here now I stretch my hands right now in the name of Jesus I command the spirit of infirmity to leave your body now I command it to leave your body now please help those under the anointing be healed in the name of Jesus of every infirmity be healed in the name of Jesus. The spirit of prayer and supplication, I stretch my hands right now, is locating at least 51 people. My God, I cry. The mysteries of the altar of prayer, receive it now. Fire from heaven. Mandalikata, Brakato Shenakata, the grace to pray, the grace to fast. Let it be yours in the name of Jesus. Then I'm a 
Listen, I want you to believe every word that I want to speak over your life now. You see, before you believe a man of God, find out his track record. Don't just believe for nothing. There are two dimensions to the prophetic. There is the revelatory dimension of the prophetic. And there is the creative dimension of the prophetic. I want to speak certain things to your life now. I want you to believe it and I want you to shout a loud amen. Every closed door, listen, Makatos Kabarandashia, over your life, I come by this apostolic and prophetic mantle. I speak to every closed door. Efata, be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Help them, please. Be open now. Lord, you took my pain away, and then you gave me joy. You're my peace, my melody in the center of the storm. You gave me a brand new song to sing to you. That's why I will lift up my voice and sing. destiny now listen this prayer I'm about to pray please listen listen to the instruction please for those of you up and down everybody in this prayer please be your brother's keeper just hear what I'm saying be your brother's keeper because the prayer I'm about to pray when the anointing comes many people will find themselves acting out what I'm saying so that they don't injure themselves are you ready now I want to release speed over your life. Listen. That's why I'm saying be your brother's keeper. Right now I stretch my hands. I declare the grace for speed. Let it come on you now. Take that grace for speed. 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 Help them please. I command speed. You will run like Elijah. You will overtake the chariot. I command speed to your destiny. What has not been done in the last five years of your life, I empower you by the anointing. Go and do it. Pursue. Overtake. Pursue. Overtake. Pursue. Overtake. Pursue. Overtake. Listen, when Saul met Samuel, he said to him on your, the donkey you have been looking for has been found. I don't know what has left your life. I want to call it back. In the name that is above all names, whatever has left your life, I speak to it. Hear ye the word of the Lord. I command it to return back to your life now. I command it to return back to your life now. Please help them. It says... Therefore, even thy God has anointed you with an oil of gladness that makes you above your fellows. I want to release a grace for you. Let me tell you, there is a grace that distinguishes men. If 
that grace is not upon you you will not do much in this life i stretch my hands the anointing and the grace that can set you apart right now may that grace come upon your life may that grace come upon your life I declare over your life listen he said and the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon the distance between you and the next level is one destiny helper away but I need to pray for you destiny helpers never come on their own they are called by prophecy I prophesy to the north I prophesy to the south I prophesy to the east and the west wherever the helpers of your destiny are i call them to your life now i call them to your life now i call them to your ministry now listen the bible says where you have been deserted so that no man passes through you it says you shall be called an eternal excellency a joy of many generations i don't know who has ignored you and despised the grace of god upon your life but in the name of jesus i declare the gate for your relevance let it be open now let it be open now listen there are many of you who are gifted but your gift is not anointed so you you are gifted there is grace your certificate is good but there is no anointing on it in the name of jesus the grace that shifts men into their destiny i stretch my hands to you and i shift you by prophecy now in the name of jesus christ Can I pray for your family members? Some of you, the trouble you left at home is not leaving you to, to concentrate now. I declare by the ministry of angels, may the angel of the Lord visit every family here and bring strange testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, listen, don't let the devil make you think that you are just hearing empty prophecies from a man of God. No, no. You will make a fool out of yourself. Some of you have come into this land. Uyo is a good land. It's a land with plenty. But it takes the anointing to give you your own portion. I pray for you. In the name of Jesus, I stand here by the grace God has given me. Between now and the next two months, I'm speaking to someone. Find strange favor in this land. Find strange favor in this land. Listen. Favor is the number one reason people succeed. I want to pray for you again. Many of you don't know anything about favor. You've seen breakthrough, not favor. Favor is when a man comes to hold your hand and say, I will not leave you till you succeed. I pray for you. The kind of favor that will veto your background and prove the validity of your connection with God. Receive that favor now. Hallelujah. Now I want to pray for you. It's a very serious prayer. I want to pray now. And I want you to pay attention. Every force 
that has been manipulating your life and destiny some of you will be surprised what will happen to you now you will never know that the mystery behind the delay and the sufferings are yokes of darkness you may not believe it just pay attention right now in the name of Jesus and at the count of three if there is anyone under the sound of my voice under any kaya katata barakata, under any kind of demonic manipulation as I count three the fire of God is coming on them I declare liberty you know my voice I speak as one sent from God at the count of three I want everyone here to shout Jesus one two three I decree every force go 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 come out of them now I command every devil I command every spirit every oppression of witchcraft let them go now where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty be free now be free now release their destinies release their breakthrough I'm rounding up any family here that has refused to move forward no matter what you do it's like a barrier has been created I push you by prophecy in the name of Jesus Christ I push you by prophecy in the name of Jesus Christ I push you to your destiny by prophecy anyone here in ministry and it looks like you know there is a higher level of grace I pray for you it will be like the dream of the night but in the name of Jesus the oil for the next season let it come upon you right now let it come upon you right now NCCF I want to speak to you everything that is alive grows therefore I speak to you NCCF acquire bomb hear the word of the Lord I declare rise to a new level find favor with the government of Akwaibo in the name of Jesus Christ listen whatever is your central project in this spiritual season I place an anointing on it and I call it done whether it's a building project whether it is vehicles I speak it into existence in the name of Jesus Christ I understand you are using a church that is not your usual venue and my protocol was talking to me about the kind and very humble man of God I, I know that I'm sure that possibly I may get to see him before I leave but the least we can do is to agree as a family and speak over this church too when Jesus gave his donkey to be used for the triumphant entry the donkey was given the privilege of marching on the clothes when Peter donated his boat for Jesus to speak in he said now that you have satisfied my own desire cast your nets to the other side we pray for this church Malako and he measured a thousand cubits and it was to my 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 legs my feet in the name of Jesus a new season of strange signs and wonders comes for this church whatever their spiritual dimension of progress is by the privilege of the election of grace I speak over the work and I command multiplication in the name of Jesus Christ finally let me speak over your life there is a fear that comes upon men when they enter the embalmments if there is anyone here that the hand of death is already attempting to, start you, to find you 
I speak to you in the name of Jesus I command death to pass away from you I declare that with long life he will satisfy you and show you his salvation in the name of Jesus now whatever else you genuinely desire from God whether I mentioned it or not I stretch my hands and I declare by the connection of your faith I turn your request to your testimony now in the name of Jesus Christ I want to specially thank the executives of the NCCF thank you so much men and women of God the leadership of this church thank you so much dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the face of development lord grant me the discipline